Hello. Good afternoon. This is Rabbi Sachs of the Chai Center. And welcome to the Chai Academy. Chai Academy is a, a diverse, myriad type classes that um, hopefully will satisfy one's palate for knowledge, Jewish knowledge at that. And um, one could find the Chai Academy at thechaicenter.com forward slash academy. If you wish to ask a question, you may do it here during our live chat or rabbi at thechaicenter.com. So, new week. Today's Monday, new week, and the end of last week, we were talking about Maimonides, the idea, and um, we, you know, we went through it, so it, we'll just go, go through it quickly. But the idea is, is that if a person is asked to forced, coerced, not asked nicely, but coerced to, 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 um, to violate a, a, um, a mitzvah via coercion, you get a beating, you know, or, you know, or beat your kids, or, or, you know, etc., um, then one is allowed to violate. All right, so we're talking about biblical mitzvahs, rabbinical mitzvahs, it doesn't matter. Because it's a coercion, so so it, it, you um, you know, and you're afraid for your life. It's better to violate now and live another day. You know, God forbid, no one's gonna hold a a, a coercion over your head. So if someone comes to you and says, you know, eat this, eat this um, pork, you know, eat this bacon sandwich, um, and um, and I, um, if not, I will kill you. You know, you are allowed to ask him for a little mustard, and um, and maybe warm it up. So, it's because that is that is, you gotta live to fight another day. However, Maimonides says that there are three mitzvahs where you have to give up your life. You have to give up your life, and those three are, as we discussed, idolatry. Right, worship this idol or die say I'd rather die right um, murder kill this person or kill these two people or do this or die you have to say I'm not murdering anybody um, that and I'd rather you take my life and the last one is is uh, is to do with with sexual indiscretions give us give us so-and-so so we can rape her or die you have to say you're gonna have to fight us or or um, you know, have have incest with this one or that one. You can say, look, I'm not doing that. I'm just, uh, you know. When it, so these three things, these three things, one has to rather die than than violate. So it doesn't apply. The live another day doesn't apply. We also discussed that um, that it, it is it it if a person did was not strong enough and they did violate one of these one of the big three so they're not you know it's 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 a tragedy it's it's it, you know it was wrong but i don't know if there's no there's no punishment going to be meted out um and there is no punishment meted out in the torah for someone because it, it, this was this was a, an honest this was this was a uh, a coercion and uh, but the ideal and, and Maimonides says this, he says that there's nothing holier than giving up your life for God. So these three things, so that in the Spanish Inquisition, where, where, where plenty, plenty of Jews were asked to denounce their faith, and they said absolutely not, and they were killed. Um, in the Spanish Inquisition, specifically, they were given three choices at one point, you know, get out convert or die so the the preferred answer was I'm getting out I'm getting out because if you can get out then you don't you don't have to die and you definitely don't have to to to, to disown one's faith um, and so we spoke about that we spoke about that at a great length a great length but throughout history throughout the years we the, the Jewish people um, you know, for the most part, are not idolaters. We, 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 you know, and and we're not murderers. You know, you have the you have the occasional 
Jewish murderer. Here's a time to, to talk about David Berkowitz, son of Sam, was not Jewish. Uh, Joel Rifkin, not Jewish. Um, you know, serial killers. But, um, you know, we, we, you know that's, that's not our thing. Perhaps it's because it's part of our DNA that we don't do this, right? We don't, we don't kill, we don't rape, we don't uh, worship other faiths. So yeah, you may find isolated, but as a whole, we just we're just not that. We're not we're not violent. Um, we believe in self defense, but we're not we're not violent, etc. Then, so that's kind of what we what we discussed the other day. But then Maimonides says the same is true in order to save your life from a sickness. So to save your life, a person is sick. They are allowed to do anything except for these three. They cannot, right? To save one's life, you know, if you uh, disown your faith, then then uh, the master doctor will come in. No, I'm not going to disown my faith. If you um, c kill this person, then we will hire the, uh, the we will hire the best. Um, the best doctors not you say you know I'm not killing anybody etc. So but 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 now let's talk about sickness in general. Yeah, Lenny's right. There there was there was Jewish organized crime, um, right? The the uh, uh, they were and some of them were pretty violent people, of course. Of course, point point taken. I don't know why why you had to make that point, Lenny, but <laughs> point taken. Um, only kidding aside. So. So let's let's take a person is told that you're very very sick. In order in order for you to heal, you're going to have to eat. Um, you're gonna have to take medication that has pork in it. You're gonna have to take medication. You're gonna have to have a a pig valve re replaced for your valve. Right. So there's no issue whatsoever. Right? If, if, if a person is sick, um, and especially especially a person who's deathly sick, but we'll talk about that in a minute, a person who's deathly sick, do anything. You do anything to save a person's life. And it doesn't matter if there's bacon involved, it doesn't matter if there's, uh, it, it just doesn't matter, nothing matters. Nothing matters. You can't violate those three, as we said, but everything else being equal, you, you it does it's not an issue it's not a worry so um you know so if if, if the person if the, if the person is sick and and, and um you know the the um the, the, the doctor says that this person has to um you know give something that the torah completely prohibits don't worry about right now including including a a a um for example, on, on Yom Kippur, right? A person is sick, a person is dehydrated and it's not healthy, or a person with diabetes and it's not healthy. It, 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 Yom Kippur takes a second to health. That's, that's, that's the message that, that Maimonides wants to give. And, um, it, you know, if, if, a, if a person is, is, um, has to have something that's, that's medication that's not kosher, let a person take it. A healthy person, on the other hand, should buy vitamins that are kosher. Make sure there's no gelatin, right? But we're talking about when we're talking about pills per se, prescribed pills, it's much le less of an issue. And like even on Passover, even on Passover, right? Because these pills, let's say they do have something in it, right? It's it's a person sick. So the person has to take the medication, take the medication, right? Um, over the counter is a totally separate animal. Over the counter, if it has, for example, um, you know, grain alcohol, don't have it on Passover, right? Uh, you know, there's certain indigestion. You know, there's certain approved medications for Passover. There's certain approved vitamins for Kashrut. Make sure it has no gelatin um, from a non-kosher animal. So, but but uh, but for, for when a person's sick and the person needs medication. It, one should not even, you know, and especially medication that's not sweet. It's not, doesn't give the person any joy. They just, you know, take it, take it, 
and um, that that is that that is fine. I do know people, by the way, when they take a capsule of Tylenol, like, let's say. Um, so generally, I buy caplet or I buy a pill. But there are some people, if, if they had only had a capsule, they would, because they don't know what the capsule is made of, is it a vegetarian capsule or not? They, they'll actually take out the powder and um, figure out a way to take the powder without taking the capsule. But once again, that's over-the-counter stuff. Um, and you can buy, by the way, if you're so concerned, so concerned, you can, you can, you can buy vegetarian capsules that you can fill up your own. Um, I think druggies do that all the time. I think so. Um, so when it comes when it comes to health, when it comes to one's health, one does not have to worry about it on Passover, Yom Kippur, if it if it's a person's really sick, even if there's a svek svek. In other words, a svek svek means okay, this person's this person has uh, dehydrated. Could they last the last Yom Kippur? You know, would it be an issue? Probably not. But what if it is a scintilla of an issue, you know, a smidgen? Is it just then? Then there's then there's no issue. Let them drink, right? And um, and likewise with with um, likewise with 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 any 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 other of the holidays, etc. Now, um, it's an interesting. He brings something interesting in in. Um, in, in my mind, in, in, in the chapter we're studying, chapter 5 of the laws of, of um, in the book of Mada and the laws of the foundations of knowledge um, and the foundations of the Torah, he does say that, that um, if a person, if you're going to feed a person non kosher, um, if they're very sick, that's one thing. If they're not very sick and there's a way to make it not taste good, that uh, you know you you feed it like 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 a pill, um, then then there's probably the better way to go. So in other words, if if um, you know if a person is given a bit of drink and it's completely not kosher, but they need it, don't worry about it. Um, if you know if it tastes good and the person enjoys it, that's that's more of a problem. Very sick, it's not an issue. Very sick, it's not an issue whatsoever. Um, and so he, you know, he does mention that that it's it's ideally that one should not um, enjoy the non kosher they're eating. But for very sick, we don't even think of it. In fact, you know, when it comes to saving one's life, and here's an interesting halachic principle from Jewish law, is that if there is if there is a danger, a a a, a possible danger. We, we do whatever we can to save the person's life and then ask questions later. We're not talking about danger of property. We're talking about danger of life, individual life. If there's a danger of individual life, ask questions later. And uh, the Mishnah, which is preceded Rambam, right? It says that if, if a woman is in, in, in the water and she's we either wearing no clothes or she's wearing a very skimpy outfit, and um, and you're an observant Jew who doesn't touch members of the other, of the other um, sex, the opposite sex, and um, and you see that she's having trouble, you know, a riptide or she, you know, she's tiring in the water and, right? He says, and you hesitate for a moment to save this woman, then you, then he calls you a shaita, he calls you an idiot. The Mishnah says you're an idiot because you hesitated. Of course, you'll do it in the end. But if you hesitated, you're an idiot. So when it comes to saving one's life, pretty much everything, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, except for those three aforementioned. Then Maimonides, we kind of finished chapter five. Maimonides goes into chapter six. Maimonides says that it talks about the concept of writing God's name. So whether God's name is written Hebrew or in English, right? we're not allowed to erase God's name. And he says, what is God's name? And he gives, he gives the seven main names of God, right? Kale, Elohim, right? The Tetragrammaton, he gives uh, Shin Daladur, Shakai, Tzvakot, he gives seven names. That these names 
you're not if they're written you're not allowed to erase and so true in every other language so um, if you're referring when you write God G-O-D you can't erase that if you write the word Lord and it's referring to God you can't erase it if you write Lord and it's referring to Lord Balfour then you can erase it but if it has a holy connotation then then you cannot erase it and um, you're not allowed to erase um, and, and, and it's a biblical prohibition to erase so therefore if you notice in in um, in on paper on paper you'll find many people because paper is so easily destroyed your mind you'll find many first of all in Hebrew nobody would write the tetragrammaton ever um, and even the other names of God you instead of write instead of writing Aleph Lamed hey Yud Mem which which is Elo and then him they would distort the hey to make it a kuf Elo Kim so it's not written properly and in English what, what many people do instead of writing G O D for God they'll write G dash D or the right GD um, so that way because it's on paper and then it gets thrown out it's quite it's considered destruction of of God's name now writing it on a computer writing GOD on a computer it seems like the pixels um, getting to it electronic writing exactly it Len um, so writing it on, on a computer the pixels are not permanent they were never designed to be permanent and and therefore if you write god in a computer you are allowed to you know go to the x out and go to the new page because it's 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 not paper it's it's this digital digital which is not which is not real if you print from your computer now that's a whole different game right so therefore we're careful where do we see that people do write the full name um, we, first of all, in the Torah, in a Jewish book, um, and any book that does have, for example, this 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 book right here, right, which does have God's name, um, I don't throw it out. A Torah, a book, these things cannot be thrown out, but rather they have to be buried. If there's something that had G-O-D on it, it would have to be torn out from that space and buried. If the book is replete with it, then you bury the whole book. This book is replete with it. So when it comes, it's time every so often, every few months, I take it into a service and they charge me, I don't know, a dollar twenty a pound, and um, and and I bury I bury the the the, um, the 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 books, the booklets, or whatever it may be. Um, but however, if you have if you have a matzev, if you have a monument, and you write God's name, a monument, and you engrave God's name. So that's not going to be thrown out. If you write it on a plaque that goes on on the, on, a, on a wall, chances are it's not going to be thrown out because it's it's designed to last for a long time, and it's not just like paper, which is which can erode. Um, so so you're not allowed to burn it. By the way, the Nazis burnt. We don't burn, but we do bury it. And there's different ways of of burying. So if it's a Torah, if it's a Torah, if it's a mezuzah. If it's tefillin, so these these are, you know, these are the three our holiest objects. Then they're actually not just buried in in a in a brown box, or they're not just buried in a plastic bag, but rather they're wrapped up either in in, in and placed wrapped up with with um, plastic, and placed in an earthenware vessel. And these days they place them in a rubber made, and they and they and they bury them. They bury them usually with a, with with. When they're burying somebody, it's considered a great thing to be buried. Um, if it's books, then it doesn't need to be wrapped and then placed in a rubber made. It could be it could be um, placed in, in in a garbage bag or in a box, and it decomposes in the ground and it becomes earth. And um, and and um, and so there are plenty of places that have Geniza. Upstate New York is very cheap property. Was anyway. And what many organizations did is they bought acres and acres of property, and um, they charged people to bury the holy books. And nobody walks on it because you're not allowed to walk. Where just like you don't walk on a grave, you would not walk 
on where the holy holy books or Torahs were buried. So, and um, you know, and they they had their own um, digger or whatever it's called, and um, they they you know they every so often they dig a hole, throw all the Seamus. It's called Seamus, nice Irish name. Yeah, where am I, Seamus? Where am I gonna put you, Seamus? Um, so you put Seamus in the ground. Is that what you're telling me? Um, and then they, and they, and and you and you bury it. Likewise, if God forbid, you know, you have shawls that got burnt, etc. So the burnt Torah is placed in 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 the um, or flooded, ruined through a flood. You place them in the ground. And this, by the way, it's such reverence. The Torah is such reverence. This is how you can tell that the Nazis were so off base, right? They made they made lampshades out of the Torah, right? They made uh, they made uh, um, regular shades. They um, they did you know they they did whatever they want with the Torah, and whereas we take such efforts to make sure that it's it's buried and wrapped multiple times and in cloth or in, in or in saran wrap and and. Uh, so that way, it's it's uh, no bugs get to it, etc., etc., etc. And here they just, you know, they just they just use it for whatever they want, or they burn them. Um, that, that's how reprehensible um, the Nazis were. No regard for anything. Uh, so so and so there are places that they have what they call a geniza, and a geniza is usually done in where property is cheap because otherwise some synagogues have a geniza on the property. But that fills up very quickly, because you know I can't. I can only tell you what what uh, now during Corona I don't allow it. But um, um, there, um, so um, the the, the um, I can't tell you how much how much of this stuff I have to bury. So um, someone just asked, you have a pig valve? Yes, yes. We can have a pig valve. You can have a baboon baboon valve. I think Lenny's point, which was not taken understood was what's a big deal with a pig valve you don't eat the pig valve but my point was that a person shouldn't worry oh I'm having a pig valve or I'm taking um, blood um, right so so uh, so the so Lenny here's a lesson we confuse people um, so so um, you know, you can a person a person you're not allowed to eat blood according to Torah, but you can have blood, you can give blood, you can accept blood and platelets and plasma, all that all that is allowed. Um, you're not allowed to eat blood. You're not that's you know, eating blood is a biblical infraction, and um, but if a person is very sick and they have to have a something that still hasn't been salted and soaked, then so be it. Now. So going back, going back to the Seamus, what happens if you engraved on, on a utensil God's name and you're ready to throw this utensil out? You can't. You can't throw the utensil out. You just can't. Right? You have to um, cut that utensil, either bury the whole utensil or cut around the temple, the, t the utensil, just like, just like you would. Um, just like you would a piece of paper, right? And um, and you bury it there. So, you know, one one should one should be very careful because you cannot um, you cannot just throw throw out things. Um, so so the the um, so so there's there's the idea of, of not throwing out. One has to be very careful and with what they write, right? So. I know when I write a letter, very rare these days, but but even when I type a letter, if I know it's going to be printed, I will write a G dash D. So not as to write God's name or L dash R D as an example. And uh, because of this concept of Seamus, um, therefore you'll find many people use the term Hashem. Because Hashem means the name, the ineffable name. So it's referring to God. But it's not one of the holy names that you're not allowed to erase, and 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 you're not supposed to say God's name in vain, other, only other than teaching, etc. So therefore, people say, you know, how are you feeling? They say instead of saying, oh, thank God, they say Baruch Hashem, and Hashem, Hashem, Hashem. You'll hear that a lot, 
Hashem loosely translated is, uh, or literally translated rather, is Hashem, the name, the ineffable name. Right? So, so um, that's why people get used to saying it. So that way you get used to writing it also. May Hashem bless you. You can write that and that can still be thrown out. Um, now, the, 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 um, my mind is asked, what happens if somebody had tattooed, tattooed on their skin God's name, right? So, so first of all, we know that in Judaism, one is not allowed to get a tattoo. What is less known in Judaism, that if you do get a tattoo, you're still able to be buried in a Jewish cemetery. If you've heard anything to the reverse, it's only because the, the, the grandma wanted to make sure that her grandchild did not go to the village and get a tattoo. That, that was it, basically. But, um, but you're not allowed to. All said equally, one is not allowed to get a tattoo, just not allowed. But what happens if you got a tattoo? And I've seen, by the way, I have seen somebody with God's name as a tattoo on their body, right? So um, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it creates different problems. You don't want God's name seeing, seeing your genitalia. You don't want God's name going into a bathroom. So if a person is, is, uh, was, was, didn't think it through and had a tattoo on, on their skin, they actually have to kind of wear a, a something over the tattoo when they go to the bathroom. When they go take a shower, they have to wear something over the, the because you're not allowed to take a, a book into a bathroom. You're not allowed to take a Torah into a bathroom. It has God's name in it. So therefore, you're not allowed to walk into a bathroom with tefillin has God's name in it. So therefore, likewise, um, it, it is, you want, one is not allowed to, 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 you know, to be exposed in, in, in any type of way to God's name. Um, and um, now that's a tattoo. That's a tattoo that's permanent. If a person writes God's name, writes, which is not permanent, right? Maimonides says, and this is the acceptance, that if you wash it, it will come off by your direct action. So if you wrote God's name on your arm, guess what? Don't wash that arm. While you take a shower, cover it. And when it fades, it fades. But you, the individual, can't have an active role in, 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 in causing it to fade. That's part of the problem. Tattoo's permanent, so you kind of have to, have to wear a, a uh, you know, some type of ace bandage or a sleeve, you know, to, to cover it for when you go to the bathroom, when you shower, or, you know, et cetera. So a uh, tattoo is, is definitely, definitely, it's for the long term. Um, question that, that I was asked once, are you allowed to get the tattoo of God removed? So we know that our tattoo removal techniques are supposed to be painful, um, but can you get the one of God removed? And the answer is probably not. You can't just go ahead and start, um, right? So, so, um, so, advice, free advice. Um, don't get tattoos of God. You probably shouldn't get tattoos at all, but if you do, God bless you. Um, and um, I'm not judge, jury, but um, definitely, definitely do not get anything with God or remote, close to God, G-O-D, or anything like that, because you're going to run into lifelong problems. Um, so this is it for today. I have to go to a funeral now. Um, if you have any questions, Rabbi at the Chai Center, and um, thank you all for, for for checking in. And Lenny, I'm sorry if I was uh, I, I was joking, but you asked good questions about electronic writing and things like that. So the pig valve, someone didn't understand what you meant. Um, so God bless and. You should have a great the rest of the day.